Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from LeetCode called the lowest common ancestor of a binary search tree. It is a medium. We're going to jump right into it. Given a binary search tree or a BST, find the lowest common ancestor node of two given nodes in the BST. According to the definition of LCA on Wiki, the lowest common ancestor is defined between two nodes P and Q as the lowest node in tree T that has both P and Q as descendants, where we allow a node to be a descendant of itself. So example one, we have this BST right here, and we want to find P and Q of two and eight. So the lowest common ancestor node would be six. Both are descendants of it. Example two, we have the same tree. And this time our P and Q are two and four. So the LCA here is to itself since a node can be a descendant of itself. So it is the ancestor of both two and four. Because remember, we want to find the lowest common ancestor. Example three, we have two and one. So we would have just root node two and left child one. Of course, it's similar to this example right here. The root node two would be the LCA. And we have some constraints here. The number of nodes would be within this range. All the node values are unique. P is not equivalent to Q and P and Q will exist in the BST. So we're guaranteed to get a valid output when we're searching for our LCA in our binary search tree. Okay, so this is actually pretty straightforward, but before going into it, let's think about some edge cases first. Given a binary search tree, what is our worst possible LCA? What is a common ancestor that is as far from P and Q as possible? Well, that would be the root node, right? Because any node P and Q, no matter where they are on the tree, are a descendant of the root node. It is a common node between both P and Q. So worst case, if P and Q are on different halves of the subtrees, if they split up right away, then the LCA would be the root node itself. Because again, it is the direct ancestor of every other node. So it is always a common ancestor of any node. Now, what is the best case scenario? How do we get as close to either P or Q as possible? Well, that is if the LCA is either P or Q. And that would happen if either P or Q is a direct or indirect parent of the other. Say one was two, the other was five. In that case, the LCA would be two since one of its descendants is five. So what we want to do is find a common ancestor of both P and Q that is as low as possible. And remember, this is a binary search tree, which means the values are ordered in a very specific manner. In a binary search tree, what happens is the left child is always less than the roots value and the roots value is always less than the right child. And we've done a video where we explore exactly what a valid BST is. I've linked it down below if you want to look at that. But we're going to make use of the fact that we have a binary search tree. And we can look at these examples, right? They're very specifically ordered. Left is always less than the root. The root is always less than the right, no matter where we are. Even here, left is less than root. Root is less than right. So if we have the following examples, say this is our BST and these are our P and Q, what is the LCA for each one? So we have a node five and 10. The LCA for this would be eight because that is what's holding them two together. What about five and 14? That would again still be eight because five and 14, they're both less than 15, right? But once we get to eight, we see that they're not in the same half. And so we split, which is why this is our least common ancestor because 15 obviously is a common ancestor, but to get more specific, to get as low as possible, we would go with eight. Now, what about two and six? Well, we can use five for that. That would be our LCA and how we would go about doing this, right? We would start from the top. We have 15 and we see our values. Two and six are less than 15, which means they both lie on the left half of this tree. Then we compare both values against eight and we see again, we are both less than eight. So we go to the left child of eight, compare against it. We see one is less than it, one is greater than it. So we know we split and that split would be our LCA. So our LC in this case would be five. What we're looking for is a split. When both values are either less than or greater than, we just keep going. But once that is no longer true, that is how we know we found our LCA. Now this also works if one is a parent of another because both values in that case would not be greater than or less than the root. It would actually be equal to it. So if we look at P and Q being 22 and 18, we compare against our root node. 
it's greater than our root node 15, so we move to the right half of that tree. So we check against the right child. Now, 22 and 18, only one is less than the root. The other is not less than it. So we know we've sort of split and 22 would be our LCA. So that is all we need to do. So what we're gonna do is we are going to recursively call lowest common ancestor and check P and Q against the root. If both are either less than it, then we're going to call this again with the left child. If both are greater than it, we're gonna call it with the right child. If neither is true, we found our LCA and we would return the root. And that's it, that is the logic. So let's go ahead and code this up and then super quickly run through an example. So we're gonna go ahead and code this up. And remember, this is a recursive solution, which means we need a base case and a recursive case. So what is our recursive case? We wanna keep going while P and Q are on the same side. So either both are less than the root or both are greater than the root. So if p.val is less than root.val and q.val is less than root.val, that means we wanna check the left subtree. So we are going to return self.lowest common ancestor with root.left p and q. If that is not the case, then we want to check the other side, right? So if root.val is less than p.val and root.val is less than q.val, we want to return self.lowest common ancestor of root.right p and q. And if neither are true, then we just want to return the root. And that is it. That is how simple this is. And if you actually notice something here, right, usually with binary trees and recursive solutions, a check we often make is to see whether the root being passed in is none, because we don't want to operate if the root is none, except in this case, we would never run into that situation. But why is that? So we're never going to make it that far down the tree to where we're going to be running into roots that don't exist. That would happen if we go down as far as the leaf and then try to call either child of a leaf node. But we would never even make it to a leaf node because what we're looking for is a least common ancestor. That means it has to have a descendant. Even if the node is the descendant of itself, it still has another descendant. So we'll never run into that situation, which is why we don't need to make those checks and why this is a very simple few lines of code. So let's go ahead and run this. Runtime error. Oh, that is because our example is still over here. So let me go ahead and comment this whole thing out. And now we can go ahead and run code. Accepted and submit. And it is accepted as well. So before we run through a super quick example of space and time complexity, we only want to go down as far as the tree is so if this is a balanced binary tree, which means there are nodes on both left and right sides at all times, then that would be log n because that's sort of the depth of the tree, right? We just double each time. So that is log base two of n. However, we are not told that this is a balanced binary search tree, which means we could potentially have nodes just only on the right side, which means all our nodes are on one side and we would have to go through all of them. If worst case, our LC is the second to last node. So that would be O of N. And same with space, our call stack would go as far down recursively. We're just building and building up until we hit all the nodes. So that would also be O of N. Now let's go ahead and run through a super quick example. So for our example, let's say we have this BSC over here and our P and Q are 17 and 18. Our very first call would be with the root node, which is 15, P is 17 and Q is 18. Now let's go line by line just to see how this is running. We go in the first if statement to see if P is less than the root's value and if Q is less than the root's value. Neither are true, so we go into this next if condition. If the root's value is less than P and the root's value is less than Q, which is true, well now we call this again with root.write. So we're gonna call this same function, we can't return yet, except with root being 22. So we go back into lowest common ancestor and this time the root node is 22. Is P's value less than 22? That is true, 17 is less than 22, and 18 is also less than 22, which means we call this again with root dot left. So we are now going to be calling this in with root being 18. That is the left node. 
B is still 17 and Q is still 18. Now, when we call this at this point, we make this check, right? Is P's value less than the root's value? That is true. And is Q's value less than the root value? That is not true. It is equal to that value. So we go out of this if condition. Now we go into this if condition. Is the root's value less than P? That is not true. 18 is not less than 17. So what we do finally is return the root, which is 18. That is our LCA if we're given 17 and 18 as our P and Q. So that is how to find the lowest common ancestor of a binary search tree. If you have any questions whatsoever, let me know down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time.